I'm going to click a picture of this frame. And I'm going to put this picture into ChatGPT 4.0 and ask it to generate me in Studio Ghibli style, like the millions of users on Twitter have been doing. Now I'm going to ask it to generate me in a Renaissance painting style, or maybe a Van Gogh painting style. Let's try voxel art. Ooh, that looks pretty cool. While everyone has been using this new feature to reimagine themselves in a Studio Ghibli movie, I think one of the most impressive features of this capability released by OpenAI is the text generation capabilities. You get almost perfect text in every single picture that you actually generate where text is included. Now, I've had 24 hours in order to explore all these capabilities and in this video, I will show you the top 8 ways you can use all of OpenAI's imaging capabilities in real world scenarios. Now, if you're a designer, definitely watch this video till the end because I'm going to talk about how tools and capabilities like this is actually going to affect the design world. Whether you're in graphic design, whether you're in marketing, whether you're in UI, UI UX design, etc, etc. I will also try to cover how designers can upskill themselves and also how to find a place in a world where AI can do a lot of the things that you're already doing. Without further ado, hit that subscribe button and let's move on. First up, add creatives. I'm gonna get straight into the prompting. So when you're on the screen, you just click on these three buttons, click on create image, and you can just prompt anything you want to. Now, I love Durex ads. I've seen them all across Instagram. I'm sure you have too, so let's try recreating one. Imagine a Durex ad in sci-fi style. Okay? Okay, this is actually pretty damn good. It got the logo right. It says Durex for a better future, which is pretty funny, which is how Durex actually does their ads. <laughs> this is actually pretty nice. Generate me another one. Ooh, I love this. Explore with confidence. This, this is pretty much on point. And we got this by using just one line of prompt. All I did was say, imagine a Durex ad in sci-fi style. This is mad. Moving on, number two, UI design. Now, I use Rapido almost on a daily basis, but I hate the user experience and the user interface. So I want a sleeker version of that. Make me two mock-up screens of the Rapido app, but sleeker. All right, this is actually pretty sleek and nice. It actually simplified the entire UI. Yeah, I, I actually like this. It actually made it look more similar to Uber, which is the sleeker version of it, but yeah. I want you guys to actually note how accurately it got the text. Like, I can't find a single typo anywhere over here, which is pretty impressive. Now, I can use this image and ask ChatGPT in order to convert it into a wireframe or write me front-end code. I can put that on Lovable. I can use that and repurpose this image in many different ways as well. So it does a pretty decent job at UI design. Not the best, but I think it passes. Next up, we have image restyling, the stuff you've been seeing on Twitter where everyone's converting their images into Studio Ghibli images. Let's quickly do that. So I have an image that I clicked with my co-founders when all of us went on a trip, so I'm just going to upload that over here. And make this into Studio Ghibli style. All right, that actually looks pretty cool. Uh, all of us look like we are in Pokemon. All right, now I'm just gonna try a different style. Turn the same image into voxel. And there you have it. Now it looks like we're all in Minecraft. I think it's interesting to know that these variations have actually captured all the major details that were there in the original image. Like it captured the color of our shirts, it captured this cloud that was there right behind us which is there in the original image. It captured this piece of wood that was sort of lying uh, below. It's, it's pretty awesome. And a lot of you have already seen people use this for you know personal purposes like they want to restyle their images into a different art style etc etc. At number four we have infographics and diagrams. This is a really cool use case. All right, so I'm going to say make an infographic explaining how the internet works. Now, this is a very complex thing I'm asking it to do. Let's see how well it does it. 
Oh wow, this is actually pretty accurate. I mean, it's very simplified, but it's pretty much accurate. So user visits website, data travels via Wi-Fi, sent to the ISP, which is the internet service provider, and the data is retrieved. Yeah, I mean, it's very, very, very simplistic, uh, but it's right, it's not really wrong. And I'm impressed by how there's not a single typo over here. I haven't seen image models do this repeatedly, where it actually doesn't get text wrong. Pretty impressive. Let's ask for something a little more detailed right now. So I'm going to ask it, show me a cross-section diagram of a cell and label all the important parts. And let's add one more thing. I want at least 15 parts labeled. So let's see how deep it can actually go. Okay, it has close to 15 parts. Uh, a lot of them are definitely wrong. Like this is certainly not the cytoplasm. Uh, I know that much. Okay, so I think it definitely screwed up over here. I can also see some typos. So when we ask for extremely detailed stuff, I think that's where it fails. So we've discovered one limit of this capability. At number five, we have printable cards. Now you can generate visiting cards, you can generate menus at restaurants, so we're gonna try some of that right now. Make a restaurant menu with five items, with images, names of dishes, and a short description. All the items must be from Italian cuisine. All right, that actually looks pretty decent. Let's uh, try another one. All right, I'm going to do, imagine a menu card for a seafood restaurant at Goa Seafood Cuisine. Let's see what comes up. Ooh, that actually looks pretty nice. I love the way the images have come out. I love the way, I mean, it looks like it all fits together. So, pretty decent job. And using this, you can generate menu cards, you can generate printable ads, you can generate visiting cards, a bunch of stuff like that. Next up, we have comic. So I have clicked two pictures of my team. This is someone from my team and this is an image of the office. And I'm just going to type, imagine a comic conversation between these two images about some office gossip. And let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. Okay, I mean, the images look kind of accurate. It looks very similar to the office. You know, I heard some office gossip or really tell me. Okay, it's very basic. It's extremely basic. But I like the how it uh, did the whole restyling of the image. Dialogues, not so much. All right, let's try another example. So this is another person from my team. And I'm just going to type in a prompt. And let's see. OK, that's, that's actually pretty nice. That's pretty decent. Next up, website layout. Now, I know that everyone has their own thoughts about the IRCTC website and its performance, so let's try reimagining the IRCTC website. Remake the IRCTC website as if it were designed by Apple. All right, let's have a look at this. Oh my God. Yeah, this is... Actually, why don't you guys tell me, would you prefer this or would you prefer the existing IRCTC website? Tell me in the comments. I would love to know your thoughts before I give my opinion. But you know, in general, I think this is definitely capable of creating website layouts and website design. So, a thumbs up on that. Now, at number eight, we have assets. Now, these can be icon packs. These can be game assets, stuff that you, you would use in your creatives, in your brand language, in your brand design. Whatever you want it, you can create asset packs. So, I'm going to create an icon pack, imagining that I'm designing a social media website. So, let's see. Make me an icon pack with six icons for a social media app. The theme is purple and yellow. Let's see. All right, we have an icon pack loaded over here and I must say these are pretty highly detailed. You can see the shadows, you can see gradients on some of them. It's actually pretty nice. 
Now, there are definitely more things you can do with ChatGPT's imaging capabilities, but these were the top ones that I found real-world use cases for. Now, my team has taken the liberty in order to experiment a lot more with the kind of features that I've spoken about over here, so they've created a bunch of cool things that you can see over here as a montage. All right, so so far, whatever features that we've seen from ChatGPT's imaging capabilities, some of them were really awesome, like the ball went out of the park. Some of them are meh, some of them are really bad. You guys probably know which one's what. But overall, I think these are pretty great features to have. And I want you guys to remember that the current state of the capabilities that you see are the worst that it's ever going to be, which means that it's only going to get better from here. You are currently seeing the worst version of this model. That being said, let's address what it means for designers. If you're staying back, you're probably in marketing or you're a UX designer or you're a graphic designer or an artist or an illustrator or you're related to design in some way or form. Now, I know that there are some among you who actually think that, hey, my job is in danger and I might just lose it, etc., etc. And there's also the other half of you that actually think that, hey, I don't think anything's going to happen. AI sucks. I'm not replaceable at all. I'm just going to keep getting good at my skills and I think I'll be safe. The thing is, if you ask me who's right, both of you are actually right. And I'll tell you why. See, what AI has actually brought us in terms of capabilities is efficiency and costs. Right? There is higher efficiency and there is lowering of costs, which is why it is such a great threat to many job roles, many job fields, etc, etc. So you've already seen what ChatGPT 4.0 is capable of in terms of images. Now, do you really think all the companies will have a computer that is sitting and making decisions by itself and creating images by itself? Absolutely not, right? It's probably a person operating that computer and sort of making those decisions on whether it is doing a good job or whether it is not. At the end of the day, it is a human who is still the decision maker and a human who is still the prompter. Now, I'm sure that there will be systems that actually come that can actually do the prompting, but I think in the field of marketing or any kind of outward public facing field, there will always be a human decision maker that does the final check. So ultimately, it's not really AI that is going to replace whatever job role you're in. It is a human that actually can work much better and much faster than you. It is not AI replacing humans, it's better humans replacing humans. And I don't think this is really going to change in companies at all because companies take their reputations too seriously and they just can't risk giving an AI full control of all their ad copies and marketing copies and website copies and UI UX designs and stuff like that. There, there will always be humans in the loop. It's just that the number of humans who are there in the loop might be less because efficiency is actually more. So you really got to be great at what you do. Let's take illustration as an example. Now, if you wanted to illustrate something, let's say for a social media ad, or let's say for a poster or something, the barrier to execute that was actually quite high because you needed to have the skill set in order to do that. And this skill set only comes with years of training and practice, right? So let's say that the barrier to execution was somewhere over here. But today, the barrier to execution is much lowered because of AI, because AI simply does all that creative work for you. It does the creative thinking, it does the creative execution. All you need to do is give the idea. So ultimately what's happened is, Generative AI has democratized the process of design for people who are even outside of design. The entry barrier to actually do this has become pretty much lower. So all you need to have at the end of the day is good taste and good decision making capabilities. You just need to be like, this is good design, this is not good design. But that also comes with understanding the fundamentals of design itself, right? If you give AI into the hands of person with a bad sense of design, they are never going to create anything good. So ultimately what matters is you and the taste that you actually develop and your ability in order to use these technologies to your advantage. The designer who is going to win in the era of AI is going to be someone who has very strong foundations in the fundamentals of what design is. Like you'll still need to know your color theory, you'll still need to know perspectives, rule of thirds, all these very, very fundamental basic design concepts. And on top of these concepts, only can you actually adopt AI and use it in order to make your workflow faster and make yourself more productive. So it's going to be someone who understands the fundamentals, who's rooted in the fundamentals, and someone who's grown in the ways of the future, which is by using AI, using multiple models, like the model that actually came out right now in their day-to-day -day workflow in order to make it much faster and in order to enhance their creative processes. 
So bottom line, are designers going to lose jobs? Well, some of them definitely are. Teams of five might be cut into teams of two. And the two people who remain are going to be the ones who actually know how to use AI to their advantage. So the only way in order to stay afloat is to make AI your best friend and learn as much as you can and use it as much as you can in your daily life. Because this wave is definitely coming. I don't mean to scare you, but this is basically what it's going to be. But if there are any experienced designers watching this video, I'm curious to hear your thoughts as well and start a dialogue in the comments. What do you think? Where is all of this headed? Uh, how do you think design as a field is going to actually adopt AI? Uh, how fast do you think that is actually going to happen? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, subscribe to 100X. We'll be back with more stuff like this. See ya. Uh, bye.